Surfer Rosa is the debut studio album by the American alternative rock band Pixies, released in March 1988 on the British label 4AD. It was produced by Steve Albini. Surfer Rosa contains many of the elements of Pixies' earlier output, including Spanish lyrics and references to Puerto Rico. It includes references to mutilation and voyeurism alongside experimental recording techniques and a distinctive drum sound. As 4AD was an independent label, distribution in the United States was handled by British label Rough Trade Records, however, it failed to chart in either country. Only one single was released, a re-recorded version of Gigantic, and reached number 93 on the UK singles chart. Surfer Rosa was re-released in the US by Elektra Records in 1992, and in 2005 was certified gold by the Recording Industry Association of America. Surfer Rosa is often included on critics' lists of the best rock albums. Alternative rock artists including Billy Corgan and PJ Harvey have cited it as an inspiration, it was an influence on Nirvana's 1991 album Nevermind, and the band hired Albini to record their 1993 album In Utero. Before the release of Pixie's debut mini-album Come On Pilgrim in October 1987, Eva Watts Russell, head of 4AD, suggested they return to the studio to record a full-length album. The original plan was to record new material at Fort Apache Studios, where the band had produced the Purple Tape and Come On Pilgrim. However, due to differences between the band's manager Ken Goes and the Purple Tape producer Gary Smith, Pixies ended up looking for a new producer in recording studio. On the advice of a 4AD colleague, Watts Russell looked to hire Steve Albini, ex-frontman of Big Black, as the record's engineer and producer. Having sent a pre-release tape of Come On Pilgrim to Albini, Pixies manager, Ken Goes, invited him to a Boston dinner party at drummer David Ludring's house a few weeks after Come On Pilgrim's release. Baldini met the band that evening, and they discussed how the next record should sound and be recorded. Baldini said that, the band and I were in the studio the next day. Paul Coldery, who had worked at Fort Apache Studios with Smith, recommended the Boston Recording Studio Q division to Albini. This created tension between Smith and Coldery, and Coldery later remarked that Gary almost killed me for the suggestion, he thought I was scheming to get the project. Pixies entered Q division in December 1987, booking 10 working days of studio time in which to record the album. 4AD allocated the band a budget of US$10,000. Baldini's producer's fee was US$1,500, and he received no royalties. Baldini has a practice of refusing royalties from records he produces, viewing it as an insult to the band. Along with Albini in the studio, Q Division's John Lovefer acted as studio assistant. The recording process took the entire book period of 10 working days to complete, with extra vocal mixes subsequently added in the studio. Baldini planned to mix the record somewhere else, but according to Lovefer, he was unhappy there with it. During Kim Deal's vocals takes during Where Is My Mind and Gigantic, he moved the equipment to record into a studio bathroom to achieve more roomy echo. John Murphy, Deal's then husband, said that Albini didn't like the studio sound. Baldini later said that the record could have been completed in a week, but we ended up trying more experimental stuff basically to kill time and see if anything good materialized. An example was Something Against You, where Albini filtered Black Francis' voice through a guitar amp for a totally ragged, vicious texture. The recording of a conversation held between Francis and Albini can be heard at the end of Oh My Dolly. Lupfer writes that it was a concept he Albini was going for to get some studio banter. As Deal was leaving the studio to smoke a cigarette, she exclaimed if anybody touches my stuff, I'll kill ya. Francis replied with I'll kill you, you fucking die, if anybody touches my stuff. The track begins at this point, with Francis explaining the conversation to Albini, whose voice is not heard on the track. Lupfer later admitted that Albini knew perfectly well what was going on. I'm Amazed begins with Deal recounting a story in which one of her former teachers who was into field hockey players was discreetly fired. Frances finishes Deal's sentences, joking that her response to hearing of the teacher's activities was to try to join the team. Baldini later observed the use of studio banter on Surfer Rosa, it's on their record forever so I think now they are obliged to say that they're okay with it, but I honestly don't know that that idea would have ever come up if I hadn't done it. There are times when things like that are revealing and entertaining and I kind of felt it was a bit gimmicky on this record. Like Come On Pilgrim, Surfer Rosa displays a mix of musical styles, pop guitar songs such as Broken Face, Break My Body, 
and the brick is red are featured alongside slower, more melodic tracks exemplified by I Where Is My Mind. The album includes heavier material, and prominently features the band's trademark quiet loud dynamic. Frontman and principal songwriter Black Francis wrote the material, the only exception being Gigantic, which was co-written with Kim Deal. Gigantic is one of only two Pixies album tracks on which Deal sang lead vocals. Surfer Rose's lyrical content includes examinations of mutilation and incest in Break My Body and Broken Face, while references to superheroes appear on Tony's theme. Voyeurism appears in Gigantic, and surrealistic lyrics are featured on Bone Machine and Where Is My Mind. Puerto Rico references and Spanish lyrics are found on the track So My Golly and Vamos. The latter track was previously featured on Come On Pilgrim and appears on Surfer Rose as a re-recorded version of the original song. Many of the themes explored on previous recordings are revisited on Surfer Rosa, however, unlike on the band's later albums, the songs in Surfer Rosa are not preoccupied with one overarching topic. Other unusual and offbeat subject matter is raised on the album. Cactus is narrated by a prison inmate who requests his girlfriend smear her dress with blood and mail it to him. Gigantic is an unabashed praise song to a well-endowed black man, and borrows from the 1986 film Crimes of the Heart in which a married woman falls in love with a teenager. Francis was inspired to write Where Is My Mind, after scuba diving in the Caribbean. He later said he had this very small fish trying to chase me. I don't know why, I don't know too much about fish behavior. Surfer Rosa was released in the UK by 4AD on March 21, 1988, entering the UK Indie chart the following week. It spent 60 weeks in the chart, peaking at number 2, until August of that year it was only available in the U.S. as an import. Although the label held worldwide distribution rights to Pixies, they did not have access to a distributor outside the U.K. When 4AD signed a distribution deal with Rough Trade's U.S. branch, the album was released on vinyl and cassette as part of the Surfer Rosa slash Come On Pilgrim release. While Surfer Rosa slash Come On Pilgrim has remained in print on CD in the U.K., subsequent U.S. releases have seen the two released on separate CDs. These separate releases first appeared in January 1992, when Elektra Records first reissued the band's first two albums. After 4AD reacquired rights to the band's US distribution, they released both as separate CDs. Surfer Rosa was certified gold by the Recording Industry Association of America in 2005, 17 years after its original release. Gigantic was the only single taken from Surfer Rosa. The track and its B side, River Euphrates, were re-recorded by Gil Norton at Blackwing Studios in London, early in May 1988. The remixed single was well met by critics. The single failed to sell, and spent just one week at number 93 on the UK singles chart. Despite the per-commercial performance of both Surfer Rosa and Gigantic, Eva Watts Russell has said that the response to the album was times five compared with Come On Pilgrim. Surfer Rosa's cover artwork features a photograph of a topless friend of a friend of the band, posing as a flamenco dancer, pitched against a wall which displays a crucifix and a torn poster. Simon Larblesteer, who contributed pictures to all Pixies' album sleeves, decided to build the set because we couldn't find the atmosphere we wanted naturally. According to Larblesteer, Black Francis came up with the idea for the cover as he wrote songs in his father's topless Spanish bar, Larblesteer added the crucifix and torn poster, and they sort of loaded it with all the Catholicism. Commenting on the cover in 2005, Francis said, I just hope people find it tasteful. The cover booklet expands on the theme and features photographs of the flamenco dancer and several other poses. There are no song lyrics or written content, apart from album credits, in the booklet. Baldini's name does not appear on the original record sleeve. The booklet's photographs were taken in one day at a pub opposite the 4AD offices because, according to Larblesteer, it was one of the few places that had a raised stage. In a 1988 interview with Joy Press, Black Francis described the concept as referring to a surfer girl who walks along the beach of Bin Ones, has a surfboard, very beautiful. When questioned about the topless element, he replied, for the first record, I told them I like nudity. I like body lines, not necessarily something in bad taste, didn't even have to be female, just body lines, like that obsession ad, you know. According to Melody Maker, the album was originally entitled Gigantic After Deal's Song, but the band feared misinterpretation of the cover and changed it to Surfer Rosa. The name of the cover woman and the album title comes from the Oh My Golly lyric Basando Shichando Con Surfer Rosa, 
which roughly translates to kissing Chicha with Surfer Rosa. UK music press reviews of Surfer Rosa were generally positive. QZ and Craner wrote that what sets the Pixies apart are their sudden bursts of memorable pop melody, and noted that they could have a bright future ahead of them. Anemius Mark Sinker, reviewing the album in March 1988, said they forced the past to sound like them, while Dave Henderson from Underground Magazine found the songs well-crafted, well-delivered sketches which embrace commercial ideals as well as bizarre left-field out-of-control moments. American Music Magazine Spin described it as beautifully brutal and named Pixies their Musicians of the Year. In a less enthusiastic contemporary review for The Village Voice, Robert Christgau found the band's guitar riffs recognizable and their strong rhythms unique, but felt they had been overrated by critics who hailed them as the Amarini find of the year. In a 2003 review of the Pixies' 2002 self-titled EP, Christgau wrote that while he initially found Francis Fay and philosophically limited lyrics somewhat annoying, Surfer Rosa now seemed audaciously funny and musically prophetic. At the end of 1988, Surfer Rosa was named one of the year's best albums on English critics' year-end lists. Independent Music Magazine's Melody Maker and Sounds named Surfer Rosa as their album of the year, Enemy and Record Mirror placed the album 10th and 14th, respectively. However, Surfer Rosa failed to appear on the Village Voices Paz and Jop, an annual poll of American critics. It also did not appear on any end-of-year list in the United States. A number of music magazines have since positioned Surfer Rosa as one of the quintessential alternative rock records of the 1980s. The album has appeared on several all-time best album lists and is consistently placed as one of the best albums of the 1980s in any genre. As of 2015, sales in the United States have exceeded 705,000 copies, according to Nielsen SoundScan. Both Surfer Rosa and Steve Albini's production of the album have been influential on alternative rock and on grunge in particular. Nirvana's Kurt Cobain cited Surfer Rosa as the basis for Nevermind's songwriting. When he first heard the album, Cobain discovered a template for the mix of heavy noise and pop he was aiming to achieve. He remarked in 1992 that he heard songs off of Surfer Rosa that I'd written but threw out because I was too afraid to play them for anybody. Cobain hired Albini to produce Nirvana's 1993 album In Utero, primarily due to his contribution to Surfer Rosa. The Smashing Pumpkins' Billy Corgan described Surfer Rosa as the one that made me go, holy shit. It was so fresh. It rocked without being lame. Corgan was impressed by the album's drum sound and acknowledged that the Smashing Pumpkins used to study the record for its technical elements. Musician PJ Harvey said that Surfer Rosa blew my mind and that she immediately went to track down Steve Albini. Cobain listed Surfer Rosa as one of the top 50 albums he thought were most influential to Nirvana's sound in his journal in 1993. People connected with the band were impressed by the record. Eva Watts Russell recalled, I remember when I first heard Surfer Rosa thinking, I didn't know the Pixies could sound like the fall. That was my immediate reaction, in other words, incredibly raw. Gary Smith, who at the time was in a disagreement with the band, admitted he was really happy that they had made such a forceful, aggressive, record. Dinosaur Jr.'s Jay Massey's, comparing the record to the later Pixies albums Bossa Nova and Trompe Le Monde, said he thought that Steve Albini's production sounded way better than the other ones. In 1991, as Pixies were recording Trompe Le Monde, Baldini described his impressions of Pixies during the recording of Surfer Rosa to the fan magazine Forced Exposure, a patchwork bench loath from a band who at their top dollar best are blandly entertaining college rock. Their willingness to be guided by their manager, their record company and their producers is unparalleled. Never have I seen four cows more anxious to be led around by their nose rings. Baldini later apologized for his remarks, saying, To this day I regret having done it. I don't think that I regarded the band as significantly as I should have. All tracks written by Black Francis, except where noted. For the Surfer Rosa slash Come on Pilgrim release, the eight tracks of Come on Pilgrim appear after Brick is Red. The untitled 11th track consists of a quiet recording of conversation in the studio. It exists as a separate track on some CD releases but is not listed on the artwork. As such, after track 10, the track listing numbering on the artwork does not match actual tracks on those CDs. The album was remastered and released in 2007 as a hybrid super audio CD disc by Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab from recently discovered, first-generation analog original master tapes. The studio banter that makes up the untitled track on other releases is on the same track as Oh My Golly. 
All information taken from the CD release of Surfer Rosa. Pixies Black Francis, Vocals, Rhythm Guitar, Acoustic Guitar. Kim Deal, Bass, Vocals, Lead Vocals on Gigantic, credited as Mrs. John Murphy. Joy Santiago, Lead Guitar. David Lovering, Drums Technical Steve Albini, Production, Audio Engineering. Simon Larblesteer, Vaughn Oliver, Cover Image, Album Booklet Imagery. Published by Rice and Beans Music BMI. The information regarding accolades attributed to Surfer Rosa is adapted from acclaimedmusic.net. Asterisk designates unordered lists.